Hi, I'm Gerald, one of the pastors here at Hope, and thanks for joining us for worship today. Have you ever made a decision that you regretted? And you knew that if you'd just been a little more self-disciplined, you would have made a better choice. Is there help for that? Is there hope for that? Can you get better at that? You can. And we're gonna be talking about that in just a couple of minutes. First, I'd like to encourage you, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, go ahead and do that right now. Click the subscribe button. And during the message today, if you hear something that you think would benefit somebody else, click that share button and you can send an email to them directly that with today's service in it. So I'll be back in just a moment and we'll talk about that. Uh, can you tell us more about the flattened marriage? It's full of regrets and comes rested on a bed of half-boiled excuses and unfinished to-do lists. Oh, that sounds nice. It's our anniversary. Congratulations! How many years? No idea. We can't remember. How about dessert on the house? Tonight's selection is a low-motivation pie. Well, that's our favorite. Let me get that order going for you. to years of neglect. We're in a series called I Choose, where we're looking at some of the big choices we make in life. Often, even without realizing, we're making them, and the results have life-altering impacts. They're all such, such uh, significant choices that we need to learn to make them intentionally rather than accidentally. So that's what we're hoping to help you do during this series. The choice we're taking a look at today is this, discipline over regret. The famous American poet Robert Frost summed up the challenge of the choices we make uh, in our lives when he wrote these words that you've probably heard. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. When we think about the two roads of life called discipline and regret that diverge from one another, all we need to do is take a look around, and it's clear, the one less traveled by is discipline. And here's why discipline is the road less traveled by. It's a tough road to travel. It takes a lot of work and effort because discipline requires delayed gratification. And delayed gratification means you choose what you want most instead of what you want now. Let me just be straight up with you on this choice. Discipline over regret. Delayed gratification, what you want most instead of what you want now, it's a constant struggle. And the struggle isn't based on uh, whether or not you're a follower of Jesus. It isn't based on how spiritual you are. It is based on the fact that we're human. One of the most spiritual, committed followers of Jesus ever was a guy named Paul, a leader in first century Christianity. Listen to how he describes his struggle with choosing discipline, how difficult it is, how frustrating it can be. Paul says, I do not understand myself. I want to do what is right, but I do not do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. Let's do a uh, group confession. How many of you have ever felt that way? Hands up with me, minds up. I mean, it happens like this. You've been eating healthy. You've done a great job for the past week. So on Saturday, you decide to reward yourself with one donut. You're going to be disciplined, and you are, until you step in the donut shop, and there they are. Double chocolate, maple bar, vanilla sprinkles, jelly-filled, glazed, bear claw, apple fritter, and you leave with a dozen. You tracking with me? I mean, the struggle is real. I get it. And then later, you regret it because you really didn't want that much sugar and all those empty calories to start your day. Here's what happened. You didn't just eat a couple of donuts. You chose regret over discipline. You chose what you wanted now over what you wanted most out of life. You chose instant gratification over delayed gratification. Carrie Fisher, who was best known for her role as Princess Leia in Star Wars movies, uh, died in December 2016. Her cause of death was first listed as cardiac arrest, but later the coroner found cocaine in her system along with traces of heroin, opiates, and meth. She'd spoken openly during her life about her experience with drug addiction. And during one interview, she said, instant gratification takes too long. What she discovered was this, that the more we want instant gratification, the more instant we want it. We want what we want now, and we want it faster 
than the time before. I'm going to make you a promise. Are you ready? If you learn to choose discipline over regret, if you learn to choose what you want most over what you want now, delayed gratification, you'll live your best life. You'll live the life you were meant to live. So let's take a look at an ancient story from history that models how all of this works. Oh, there's a pretty involved background to our story, but here's the really condensed version. Saul is the king of Israel. He makes some choices that disqualify him, so God chooses David to be Israel's next king. Obviously, Saul gets jealous and decides he's going to kill David so he can't take the throne. Well, David's best friend, Jonathan, who also happens to be Saul's son, tells David that his dad is planning to kill David and that David needs to run. There are about 600 soldiers who like David more than Saul. So they go with David and they form their own army. But they're on the run. They're on the run and they get to a place called En Gedi on the western shore of the Dead Sea. It's an oasis with barren mountains that rise almost straight up from the shore. And those mountains are full of caves. David and his men find a cave that's big enough for all 600 of them. Uh, they've gone deep into the cave and they're hiding. That's where we pick up the story. Saul was told that David was in the wilderness near En Gedi. Saul took 3,000 of the best soldiers in Israel and went looking for David and his men east of Wild Goat Rocks. He came to a cave close to some sheep pens by the road and went in to relieve himself. It happened to be the very cave in which David and his men were hiding far back in the cave. Well, nature calls, so Saul steps inside the nearest cave. I mean, you know the feeling. When you got to go, you got to go. Well, here's the closest spot, right? Saul has no idea that David is just a few yards away, hidden by rocks and the darkness of the cave. And while Saul is doing his business, there are 600 pairs of eyes watching him. That's a bit disconcerting, isn't it? Well, David's men whisper to him, Can you believe what you're seeing? This is the moment. Go get him, David. And while Saul is preoccupied taking care of what he needs to take care of, David silently creeps up close to Saul and is in a position where he can kill Saul. And David has a choice to make, discipline or regret, what he wants now or what he wants most. Although David knows he's been chosen as the next king of Israel, right now David also knows that Saul is still king. So here's what David does. David crept over and cut off a piece of Saul's robe without Saul's knowing it. I mean, Saul could have died on the toilet. I mean, talk about humiliation. But he doesn't because David chooses discipline over regret. You see, David could have chosen to become king now, in that moment by his own power, in his own timing, but not in God's timing. To be instantly gratified by killing Saul while he's doing his business. But he chooses what he wants most over what he wants now. And what he wants most is to be king when God is ready to install him as king. But David even ends up regretting having cut off a piece of Saul's robe that he didn't choose to be even more disciplined. He realizes culturally that when he cut off the piece of the robe, it was an attack on Saul and his right to be king. So then David's conscience began to hurt. And he said to his men, May the Lord keep me from doing any harm to my master, whom the Lord chose as king. I must not harm him in the least, because he is the king chosen by the Lord. His conscience began to hurt him. That's a great description of regret. And it's only a short time later, while Saul is still trying to find David and kill him, that David has another chance to kill Saul. And here's what David says this time. By the living Lord, I know that the Lord himself will kill Saul, either when his time comes to die a natural death or when he dies in battle. The Lord forbid that I should try to harm the one whom the Lord has made king. Well, Saul does eventually die in battle. David is appointed king and ends up ruling for 40 years. But even as king, he doesn't always get it right. There are times when he chooses what he wants now over what he wants most. And every time he does that, every time he isn't disciplined, every time he chooses instant gratification, it always ends in regret. His conscience hurts. One choice David makes when he doesn't take the road of discipline, David spends the rest of his life regretting that. 
I don't want that to ever happen to you because God has a better plan for your life. But you're going to have to make the tough decision to live with delayed gratification, to choose what you want most over what you want now. You might not always get it right. And in fact, I'm just going to tell you that you won't always get it right. I don't get it right all the time. None of us do. But like David, we have to keep working at choosing discipline over regret. So where is it? Where is that uh, area that's in your life where you're struggling, where you're wrestling between discipline and regret? What you want now or what you want most? Where is it? Have you ever found yourself wanting to start a task, but you end up spending hours surfing the internet or on social media? Or you want to eat healthier, but you find yourself grabbing that fast food that's nearby? Or you want to get out of debt, but you pull out your credit card again? I'm going to wade into some territory right now that might be a little uncomfortable, but that's often where truth is discovered. One of the primary indicators of whether you're choosing discipline over regret in most areas of your life is what you're choosing in one area of your life, and it's how you're managing your finances. Let me cut to the bottom line. Here it is. If you have a balance on your credit card that rolls over from one month to the next, you're choosing what you want now over what you want most. You're choosing regret over discipline. And I, I say that with firsthand knowledge because there was a time in my life, and it's been a lot of years ago now, but there was a time in my life where I owed $30,000 on credit cards. I was making some really disciplined choices in other financial areas, but not this one. And when the regrets started outweighing the gratification, when the burden of the debt was too emotionally heavy to carry, when I realized that God means it when God says, the borrower is slave to the lender. I made the choice to live with discipline over regret and paid off those credit cards. It took 18 to 24 months of intense delayed gratification to do it. But I can tell you this, that I never bought one thing on a credit card that made me feel better than being totally debt-free makes me feel. There are decisions that you might be making that seem insignificant right now but actually they are radically impacting your future. Let me give you one example. If a 25 year old person spends $25 a week on drinks at a coffee shop, pick your favorite one, whatever one you like to go to, by the time they are 65 years old, they will have spent over $52,000 on coffee. But it's even worse. Had that person invested that $25 a week at what is a very achievable rate of return, by the time they are 65, that $25 a week would be worth over $208,000. That means that $5 cup of coffee actually costs you $51. If you walked into your coffee shop, ordered a drink, and they said, that'll be $51, would you buy it? I kind of doubt it, but that's what it's actually costing you. Now, am I saying that you shouldn't enjoy life? Am, am I saying that you shouldn't have any fun? Absolutely not. I'm encouraging you to make an informed decision, a disciplined choice in every area of your life so that you can live your best life. Here's the key question to ask yourself. You've probably already figured it out. What do I want most? That's a question the majority of people have never sat down and honestly asked themselves. Ask yourself, what do I want most in life? Now, somebody's probably thinking, I want to win the lottery, and that would be great. If you do, be sure to tithe, but I want to encourage you to think a bit deeper. I'm encouraging you to think about putting Jesus in the middle of it all, because when you've experienced real grace by faith, that real grace by faith that Jesus gives you, it can literally reshape everything in your life. It will let you choose things like, what I want most is to have a godly marriage, not just a good marriage, not a marriage that says, I wish we could just stop fighting but I want to have a godly marriage. Or what I want most is to get in shape. Well, put Jesus in the middle of it. Realize that God lives in you, that your body is literally His temple. So ask yourself, what kind of temple do you want God to have? Or what I want most in life is to be debt-free. Well, put Jesus in the middle of that because He taught that we should exercise careful money management and apply wisdom before making purchases. In fact, he even taught that we should invest our resources for long-term gain. Ask yourself, what do I want most? And then put Jesus right in the middle of it. You need to know, you cannot consistently choose discipline over regret on your own. Yeah, you may get it right some of the time, 
But if you want to get it right most of the time, if you want to get it right more than you do now, then let the crucified and resurrected Jesus, who came to give you life in all of its fullness, let that Jesus into your choices. You don't have to live on your own. Make choices on your own. Figure it out on your own. If you'll let the love of Jesus envelop you, then the Spirit of God will guide you down the road last traveled by to choose discipline over regret. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you that you will guide us on that road less traveled by, the road of discipline so that we don't live with as much regret in our lives. Help us to make wise choices by putting Jesus in the middle of our decisions and that Jesus will help us choose discipline over regret. Thank you for the confidence that I have in knowing how much you'll help each of us with that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now let's sing this song together. Just as I am, you call me.
thanks again for being here today. And if you'd like to be part of what Hope is doing, both uh, on campus and our online services, I wanna encourage you to consider a gift. That gift can be made by texting it to 84321, or you can give online at hopepd.org, or of course you can mail your gift to Hope Lutheran Church, 45900 Portola Avenue, Palm Desert, California, 92260. However you give, know that you're making a difference in people's lives. Let's take a moment now and pray for our offering. Gracious God, thank you that we've had this time together today. Thank you that we get to worship you through giving. And we ask that you'll take these gifts and you'll use them to create hope and help in the lives of folks who need it. And it is through Jesus that we pray, amen. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you again next week.